We're about 90 minutes before the open on Friday, October 29th. Hello, traders. Let's get an early start to the day. I want to get this video out as soon as I can so that you can take advantage of the stocks that we might find. Let's go back and take a look at the last two stocks that I highlighted. Wednesday night, I did a video, sent it out. I like Microsoft. Now, I didn't say go out and buy Microsoft, although you can see that finished higher yesterday and you certainly could have. My point was that I feel the market is going to pull back over the course of the next week or two. And I explained in great detail why I feel that's going to happen. When we get that dip, when Microsoft pulls back with the market, we'd like to see this breakout right here hold. For sure, this breakout right here, that 304, 305 level, that's a level I would feel very comfortable selling an out-of-the-money bullish put spread on into year end so today we're going to get a little bit of a pullback we got a 20 point overnight s p pullback apple disappointed amazon disappointed facebook disappointed so out of the big five tech names we've got microsoft and google that beat expectations and that had a nice earnings reaction google was the other stock that i showed you wednesday evening same premise here long green candle closing on its high trying to get through this horizontal resistance backed off a little bit yesterday google's a fairly choppy stock in here you can see that that 100 day moving average is lending support i believe this 50 day will also be a decent support level the earnings were excellent so i would be looking to sell below that 2800 dollars level for a bullish put spread if we retrace more than half of this long green candle which is about the 2850 level then i think you've got to be a little bit careful and not put that spread on because if we come down to that 50 day you'll probably be able to use that 100 day moving average kind of the 2730 level for google but i do like both stocks i believe there's going to be a nice opportunity to sell out of the money bullish put spreads you can distance yourself from the action typically we get a little bit of a letdown in the market once mega cap tech stocks have reported earnings so let's go into a 15 minute chart s p 500 going to shift our focus a little bit one of the things that i wanted to address is context when you have a market that's trapped in a range you want to keep your s p futures trading to a minimum because it's just chop back and forth you have no directional movement if we zoom out on the daily chart the time to spread your wings and to get fairly aggressive was when you had this downward sloping trend line that was breached to the upside that is a gap and go formation and you can see the entire day you had a bullish trend day this was another nice one down to almost the 50-day moving average gap up excuse me it wasn't a gap up it was a gap down that immediately reversed and we had stacked long green candles in the first half hour of trading that is a sign of very strong momentum that downward sloping trend line had held that's a day when you want to be trading futures gap up again through these major technical resistance levels strong momentum this is when you want to be spreading your wings once we start getting to the new high the price action starts to get very choppy because now we've got lots of profit takers also interested in locking in some of those gains from the lows down in here you've got some profit taking so you're going to chop back and forth big sell off here nice rebound then what tiny tiny candles so we can expect tiny candles in wednesday night's video i pointed out that apple is typically one of the last mega cap tech companies to report earnings and i went back and took a look historically at how the market has performed once those tech giants have reported and almost every time you get some very soft price action after those numbers those big five tech companies comprise 25 percent of the s p 500 so they are very important if you're a short seller you are not going to be shorting ahead of those major announcements once they're out of the way you can get more aggressive with your shorts you'll also see some profit takers they want to wait for those results before they start taking profits and that's why we see that little bit of a letdown but that letdown will be brief and it'll be relatively shallow 
and then we'll have a nice base and rally into year end. That's how I see the market unfolding right now. We've got extremely low interest rates, and I think that the inflation fears are going to be subdued heading into year end, which tends to be very, very strong. Asset managers want the market to close on the high because then everybody opens up their end of year statement and they get this nice warm fuzzy when they see all the money that they've made. Incidentally, asset managers get paid based on percent of assets under management. When their assets under management grow, the bonuses are big. So that's one of the explanations on why you tend to see these year-end rallies. Plus, asset managers are not going to fade strong seasonality like that. So everybody's looking for that year-end rally, and that's why we got a liftoff right in here. Nobody wanted to miss out. So FOMO right in here. Now we're going to get into some quiet trading. We've got the FOMC statement coming up next Wednesday. Tapering is likely to happen, and the Fed will outline their timetable for that. That could put pressure on the market as well. The point that I want to bring home is context. So we know the market's going to be sideways, float a little bit higher, but now that we've got these big tech names out of the way, we're likely to see a little bit of retracement, a little bit of fear that the Fed is going to start tightening sooner than everybody had liked. And so you're going to see that profit taking, that dip is going to be an excellent opportunity to get these bullish put spreads off and I'm looking at probably a pullback. Let's get the major moving averages up. Not to the 50-day. We won't get anywhere near that, at least not in my opinion. I don't think we're going to get down to that 445 level, but that would be certainly a great level if we pull back that far. I think more likely we're going to see a pullback maybe into the 447.50, maybe the 450 level right in here just to pull back inside that breakout and then that will serve as a springboard for a nice little grind higher into year end. So let's take a look at some stocks that I think will set up well on the bullish side and I'm going to show you a very easy search that I ran. This is an option stalker. I marked relative strength to the S&P 500 on a daily, on a four hour and a one hour basis. Since I'm looking for bullish stocks, I'd like to see stocks that finished above yesterday's high. So I'm going to mark that. I also would like stocks with good option liquidity. And I'd like to make sure that those earnings announcements are behind us. Why? I don't want to be taking a position, especially not a swing position, when I've got earnings announcements ahead of me. I want to make sure that that's behind me and that those reactions have been very favorable. And that's why we have all these boxes marked. These are our search results. I'm just going to click through these symbols and I'm going to show you stocks I like and stocks I don't like. And this is a very small list of stocks, so let's get to it. So I'm going to first move this off screen so that I can get into my stock list. And then I'll have this off to the side and We'll take a look at what we've got on a daily chart. BG, love it. Nice, tight, upward sloping trend line. We have a breakout after earnings. You can see that from the B. We're through horizontal resistance, continuing to push higher. This is uh, the world's leader in soybeans. So they've got stockpiles in South America, North America, distribution. We all know that grain prices are rising. Budweiser, downward sloping trend line above the 50-day. No, I don't like this one as much because it's bumping up against that 100-day. It's going to have a tough time getting through, but this was a nice earnings reaction, though. CB, love this chart. But you can see how it rallied up, long red candle, pulled back. They like the earnings announcement in general, but the stock pulled back, tested that breakout. That's fine. Yesterday, it gapped up a little bit, and look at that strong close. So we know that the stock has a tendency to move around. CB, I really like it. FE, this is nice. It's through the 100-day. You can see mixed green and red candles here. That is a sign of very tenuous upward price movement. So I'm not crazy about this because I'm not seeing the go-go 
lift off to it and you can see here that there were earnings after the close yesterday so make sure you check that to see how those earnings came out if the stock is able to power through that resistance it looks good now i don't want to have anything to do with a stock like this i am not a bottom fisher forget it i want stocks that are moving higher with good momentum downward sloping trend line Reach to the upside, nice stacked green candles above the major moving averages, earnings there, very, very good earnings reaction. Go and we can see that. I'm not going to go into the five minute chart because then it'll take this down. But in any event, yeah, GSK looks really good if you get a nice pullback today. As I mentioned, the SP futures are currently down 20 on that Amazon and Apple news. You get a nice retracement on GSK today. Half of that long green candle holds. Watch for that support. Start seeing relative strength. Market ticking down. Stock ticking higher. GSK is going to work really well for you. I-C-E. Oh, yeah. Look at that horizontal breakout. Long green candle closing on its high. This has fantastic momentum. You can see that it had earnings before the open yesterday. It did retrace a little bit off of its high. This is a very strong pattern. Tiny little bullish flag formation there. Yes, I like ICE. It looks really good. You've got the volume. If you were going to sell an out of the money bullish put spread on it, I would want to click here. I would want to click right here. I would want to see that upward sloping trend line preserved somewhere around the 130 level, which is below that line, is where I would be looking to sell my out of the money bullish put spread on it. We're going to continue to go down the list. LC. Earnings after the close. Big reaction to it. Very, very nice. So again, yes, I like this breakout. You'll want to see how much of that it can retrace. But any opportunity to buy it around that breakout is going to be a good one. And DAQ. Earnings before the open. You can see... Try to get through the high, sold off the entire day. Now it's starting to try and recover some of that. Not crazy about this just because of that long red candle here, but if it can get through the high, then I think it sets up well and it shows that all that selling is out of the way. So I'm going to drop a GTC alert line right at that high so that I know if the stock is able to get through. A couple more and EE. Not bad, double bottom low off of the major moving averages. Still has to get through that resistance. If it can get through that resistance, yes, it's got a nice head of steam, strong after earnings. Put your GTC alert line right there, decent volume. Yeah, this is one I think that you can keep an eye on. Only a couple more stocks to get through here. SAP, uh, very chunky. I don't like gappy stocks like this. And it's an ADR, so that's why SU. Beautiful Suncor energy play, tar sands, Canada, high oil prices, beautiful breakout here. As long as oil stays, I believe it's above $45 per barrel is approximately their cost. They're happy. They're making lots of money. So, yes, this stock actually looks pretty good. But in general, on these commodity stocks, wait for pullbacks because they trade like commodities. Lots of ups, lots of downs. So, I think you'll have an opportunity to get in this maybe around the $25 level could be a good entry point if it comes down to that halfway point and holds then I'd be looking to sell a out of the money bullish put spread keying off that technical was resistance now support at $24 one final one Tesla loved it you know I've loved it I've had it in all my videos but it's getting a little overextended up in here so I do not like it simply for that reason alone if the stock is able to pull back then yes I would be looking to sell an out of the money bullish put spread this is above the halfway point of this long green candle so it lends itself to me putting an alert line there because if the stock pulls back on a GTC basis doesn't matter a day from now a week from now a month from now I want to know about it because if the stock pulls back to this level. It still will have preserved the halfway point of this long green candle. This is where I'll start eyeing it up to see if I can sell an out of the money bullish put spread king off of this $900 level out of the money. 
Look to sell out of the money bullish put spreads. We should see some market weakness in here during the course of the next week, two weeks at the most. That dip is going to provide us with a nice opportunity to sell these bullish put spreads. This was very, very strong price movement. Market was heading higher very, very quickly into earnings announcements. It's generally been able to tread water. So going to get a little bit of a pullback. That's your opportunity into year end. I would sell those out of the money bullish put spreads with three weeks or less till expiration. Try and take advantage of accelerated time premium decay and a seasonally bullish period of the year. I am looking for a little grind higher into year end, but I think we're going to finish right in this area if the reaction to the FOMC next week is fairly negative and we start to see that interest rates are going to be ticking higher, I think that's going to provide a headwind for the market. So I'm not looking for a big monster sell-off into year-end, but I am looking for just a little dip in here. Good luck with your trading, everyone. If you like this video, please subscribe. Turn on your notifications on YouTube. Tell others about it. I'd appreciate it. Trade well. Thank you for watching this YouTube video. I'm Pete Stolzers and I'm going to keep the trade ideas coming along with lots of education. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and please turn on your notifications so that you never miss another trade. If you like the content, please give it a thumbs up. I've loaded two other videos that I think you're really going to enjoy. Stay tuned. We'll see you soon.